Okay, welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, and today we're going to talk about thyroid. Before I get started, um, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers, and I'd like to thank the ones who are sharing our videos. And uh, our clinic is uh, specializing in the utilization of functional medicine and functional neurology with advanced equipment to help the chronically sick. So if you know of anyone who's chronically sick, they've been to multiple doctors, can't figure out what's going on with them, this might be the place for them, okay? Uh, you can go to my website at www.drjinsung.com. So today we're gonna to talk about thyroid, and I've, talk, I've had discussions about this in the past, uh, different videos, um, but today we're gonna to talk specifically about T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, T4 to T3 conversion. Now, if you look at thyroid physiology, uh, it really starts from the brain. So let's go briefly and discuss a little bit about the physiology, and then we'll go and talk about T4 to T3 conversion, okay? So if you look at the brain, there's a place called the hypothalamus. That is part of the brain that releases a hormone called TRH, and that hormone goes down to a little gland called the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. That goes to the thyroid and tells the thyroid to release thyroid hormone, and the thyroid will release T4 and T3. T4 is the inactive form, and T3 is the active form. The inactive form is about 93 to 94% production, and the active form of T3 is about 6 to 7% production. So, when we have an excess production of inactive thyroid hormone, it has to be converted to the active hormone. So, T4 needs to be converted to T. Uh, T4 needs to be converted to T3 somewhere, okay? So this is where, you know, thyroid physiology and those types of things matter, and we look at the production and the conversion. So when someone takes a medication like Synthroid, Levoxyl, um, Levothyroxine, these are all T4 medication, inactive forms, okay? So that needs to be converted to be utilized in the active form. So the first place that we need to look at for conversion is the liver. So if you look at the liver, the liver is responsible for metabolizing hormones, filtering out toxins, uh, cleaning up the blood, uh, it dumps into the gallbladder and the gallbladder will dump it into the intestines and then it'll be excreted out through the stool. So if you have poor liver function, you're going to have improper conversion of T4 to T3. So if you have, let's say, hypothyroid and low functioning thyroid, that also affects how liver will detoxify hormones, toxins, and filters out the blood. So uh, anything that affects the liver in a detrimental way, it will affect T4 to T3 conversion. If you have hypothyroid, the fact that you have hypothyroid will decrease the, the functionality of the liver and gallbladder. Uh, oftentimes I see patients come in and they've had their gallbladder removed as a result of um, um, underfunctioning thyroid or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So they have a sluggish gallbladder and it could have been an underlying condition that might have caused that. Okay? So, if you have poor functioning uh, liver cells, you're gonna have a buildup of excess hormones, toxins, uh, especially the estrogens. The estrogens will build up and increase something called thyroid binding globulin. These are carrier proteins, and they, f they affect uh, the thyroid hormones uh, in terms of conversion and the active forms of thyroid hormone, okay? So liver is a pretty important uh, organ in terms of conversion. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the next organ is the intestines. The intestines will convert about 20% of your T4 to T3. If you have poor gut flora, 
Uh, if you have a lot of antibiotic use, uh, toxins, stress, uh, birth control pills like estrogens, will decimate the gut line, gut lining, right? Um, other things like GMOs or genetically modified organisms, uh, glyph glyphosates, uh, will also damage the intestinal lining. And your intestinal lining is important for conversion of T4 to T3. So your ma majority will occur in your liver, a good part of it will occur in your intestines, and then it will occur in your uh, heart tissue, nerve tissue, and other peripheral tissues. But those two organs are very, very important for the conversion of your inactive hormone to active hormone. So that's why when some people are taking medication or medications, and they're not feeling well, it may be that they have enough T4 in their system, <clears throat> but they don't have the active form, or they, don't, they can't convert from T4 to T3. That's why some patients feel better on T3 medications or T3 uh, bioidenticals uh, for thyroid function, because they're getting the active form that can be utilized by the cells. Uh, the other thing is chronic stress. Chronic stress will affect how your brain talks to your thyroid because, like I said, the hypothalamus, that's where it starts in the brain, to the pituitary. So that brain function will be affected by high cortisol levels, and then that will impact the brain talking to your thyroid. So chronic stress is a big factor in thyroid mechanisms, in thyroid metabolism, and how it functions overall. So, thyroid communication, brain to thyroid, will be affected. Uh, it will also increase thyroid binding protein. Uh, it will also hinder detoxification in the, livers, in, in the liver. So, it creates problems in multiple areas when you have chronic stress. So, the T4 to T3 conversion is crucial for you to feel better, right? It's not just about, I have the proper level of TSH. And how come I don't feel well though, right? It's because you may be not converting your T4, your inactive, to your active form, um, which makes a, a big difference for a lot of patients. Uh, so there are certain nutrients that help with this in terms of conversion. Um, also, just fixing up your liver and gut, um, getting rid of the toxins, improving the gut microbiome. All those things will help the conversion of T4 to T3. As a matter of fact, for almost all my thyroid patients that come into our office, we actually do the gut and liver protocols with them because we want to ensure that the liver and gut uh, is not a factor in terms of their conversion from T4 to T3. Now, the other things that will be affected is, um, or that can affect T4 to T3 conversion is dopamine and uh, serotonin two neurotransmitters that significantly impact the hypothalamus. So those neurotransmitters affect the hypothalamus and therefore the production or the utilization of those neurotransmitters is very important for thyroid function. The other thing would be anemia. Uh, I consider anemia a, a deal breaker because if you don't get enough oxygen or oxygen flow to the brain, to your peripheral tissues, you can truly never heal. So you have to look at things like iron and ferritin, uh, B12 levels. Uh, we check B12 in different ways because uh, your traditional blood serum that says B12 is not an accurate marker. So you have to check something called methylmalonic acid or homocysteine uh, can give you a broader picture of what's going on with your B12. But Anemia is very important, not just iron deficiency anemia, but pernicious anemia, megaloblastic anemia, different types of anemias. You're, you need to be able to carry oxygen to the cells, although, otherwise you won't heal. So it's very important to do that. And then also brain activation, activating the brain, activating the gut. Those things are very important for healing uh, for those chronically sick patients. Okay, so T4 to T3 conversion is crucial for how you feel. It's not just about the number for TSH, it's about how you feel at your optimal, okay?
My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you next week on the healthy side. All right? Have a great day.